Hello, everyone. My guest today is David Dabochnikov. He is building a great company that changes the way Americans pay for college by leveraging data to make scholarships more accessible and transparent. He's doing this at scholarshipowl.com. David, are you ready to take us to the top? Yeah, so Scholarship Owl is basically uh, leveraging technology to increase the chances of earning private and excellent scholarship for American students. And who's paying for this, the students or somebody else? Uh, to use the premium features of the platform, the students are paying a subscription fee, which is uh, $15 a month. Um, and for that, basically, we save a huge amount of time for them, uh, preventing them from applying to scams or finding the scholarship that match them the best way possible. And how many customers do you have today? We have today uh, 15,000 paying customers um, and about 1.5 million uh, users in general. So can we take $15 times 15,000? You're doing about $220,000 a month in revenue? So with some partnerships and uh, other things, um, you know, with some B2B partnerships as well, we do a bit more than that. Okay, got it. And let me ask you, why do students keep paying you after you help them get the scholarship dollars? Once when, you have a massive churn problem? So uh, the thing is that um, the common misconception is that students need scholarships only when they're just applying to college. But the reality is that students actually need scholarships more in the first year of college and the second year than uh, in high school. Because many of the financial aid that they get is only for the first year. And um, they can use private scholarships to pay for board, for books and other things they need in college as well. And there's no limit to how many scholarships you can earn throughout your whole education. So uh, it's true that the majority of our um, users today are high school seniors. But basically, um, many of our users are between the ages of 16 and 26. And when did you launch the company, David? What year? So the company was launched in 2015, and uh, and uh, what did you what did you grow revenue to back in 2015, your first year? 2015, it wasn't we didn't have any revenue. We had we've been bootstrapped, but we were trying to figure out what would be the model. Um, 2016, uh, we already scaled to around uh, almost a two million um, in uh, revenue. And, and what did uh, you finish 2020 with? 2020, 2020, we finished with 4 million. 4 million. Okay. That's great. And so what, um, have you bootstrapped the company to date? You're still bootstrapped? So uh, until until now, we never took any external funding. Uh, only in January this year, we took uh, revenue-based funding in order to accelerate our growth. And how much did you raise? We took... Uh, we got approved to 1.3 million out of which we, at this point we took only 300,000. Okay. And what do you like or dislike about revenue-based financing? Um, I love that it's uh, non-dilutive. So basically, we don't give out a part of the company uh, in general. The thing is that VC-based uh, funding give, comes sometimes with uh, strategic partners or with uh, you know connections that revenue-based funding does not. So... That's uh, that's kind of one uh, downside. And um, when you take revenue-based uh, financing, you basically start uh, from the beginning to think how you're going to repay that. So basically, you're locked into using most of the revenue-based financing in order to generate growth on your existing model instead of kind of experimenting with more risky models that might um, cause faster growth. Talk to me about how... Talk to me about how you got your first 1,000 customers. You have 15,000 today. That's a lot of customers. How are you getting them? Um, the majority of our customers are online onboarding. So PPC, uh, affiliate network that we started building. Uh, with, and we scaled quite a bit of content um, marketing. So basically, we started pushing out a lot of content related to our space. Um, but how did you get your first? How did you get the first one thousand customers, though? So, if you're looking for some story of us going door to door, we didn't do that. Right? So it was mostly online, the standard ways. Well, so, well, David, I'm looking for your story. So when you say standard, tell me what you mean. Did you start with ads on so, day one? 
so we started with a blog related to the uh, to the space and started like advertising that blog and uh, it turned into uh, the public. Where did you advertise the blog? Um, mostly on other like platforms and smaller ones on connection, like more like personal connections. I, I don't understand what that means. <laughs> okay, so the story is that the con uh, our product didn't start as a um, SaaS product. It started actually as a blog and content related to scholarship space itself. So that kind of got a, li- a bit of traction, and on top of that, the product started being built. So that's why the, the story is a little bit confusing in that sense. But it's not like we built a SaaS product and then started like looking for customers for that. Yeah, it's not, David, it's not confusing. This is a great way to build a SaaS company. It just is what it is. It started off as content in a blog. You built an email list. Then you launched a paid membership product, it sounds like. Yeah. How large did you grow your email list before you launched the SaaS product? Uh, A few thousand. Like, not that big. Okay, like under 10,000? Yeah. Okay, and what's the email list size today? Yeah, Sorry? Six million. Six million people. Amazing. And and what kinds of things are you doing with that list to drive additional growth? Um, so when I mentioned before um, that we have additional revenue other than the SaaS side is different partnerships of other, uh, other scholarships promoting them to our platform, other companies in the educational space. Like We work with around 40 different partners at the moment. And um, what does the pitch sound like to them? Can you name a partner and explain to me how you convince them to market your product? Uh, there's many different ways. It's a bit uh, hard on the pick one. Uh, yeah, list. it's easy. It's easy if you yeah. pick a pick a story, a real story. So, um, I mean, a simple example is uh, Nielsen, for example, have um does market research to scholarships uh, and we work with them to basically work with the students to um like to, to reach out to students to um nielsen and why does yeah. nielsen help promote your product do you pay them a commission we, we do basically revenue share yeah revenue okay. share and is that typical revenue share? You just split it 50-50? We do it with Nielsen. We do it with other, um, other organizations. For example, uh, ones that promote our side, like we have the two-sided, right? So some companies promote us and some companies we promote as well. So Nielsen is an example that we promote. But Fastweb, for example, is somebody who promotes us. That they have you know, um, featured scholarships and things like that that we uh, post our scholarships to. Let's go to your team. How many people on the team? Today, we're almost 50 people. Five zero? And how many engineers? Around 20. 20 engineers. And so what are they building? What What is the most technical thing about this product? I mean, first, we have two products. We, so far, we've talked only about the student side. We also have uh, scholarship.app, which is the uh, CRM for brands and organizations to offer scholarships. And uh, um, our product actually is very tech intensive. I myself, and before Scholarship Power, I was a senior engineer at Google. So I come from engineering. And uh, the whole process of matching and finding the scholarships, uh, and leveraging, you know, they will leverage also machine learning and AI to find the ones that you have the highest chance of winning. Uh, and there's many different ways to apply to different scholarships to, uh, you know, to leverage all this huge amount of data that we already have in order to, um, Basically, instead of the student applying to hundreds of different scholarships, we want him to apply to three scholarships a week, but he, that he has the highest chance of actually earning. Got it. Uh, so 20 so engineers. In order to do that, yeah, we need a lot of data and a lot of engineering for that. How many sales uh, employees do you have, if any? We have marketing. In sales, we don't have any. Uh, we don't do uh, enterprise sales or anything like that today. So Okay, so no sales reps. How many folks on the marketing team? Eight people. Eight? Yeah. Eight people. Okay. And does that include like the content writers, the people managing the email list, these sorts of things? 
ML list, yes, content editor will work mostly with external content editors, like uh, freelancers that we work with for, for a long while. But uh, social media, uh, email content, uh, brand uh, awareness and planning, um, all those kind of like uh, product side of the marketing as well. And talk to all me about things. churn. I imagine with consumers like this, churn can sometimes maybe get high. What is your churn annually? So our monthly churn at the moment is about 12%. Um, so yeah, it's pretty high. Um, a large part of that is because our business is extremely seasonal as well. Um, you know, like not the students do not have all the, the time in the year to apply to scholarships and all of that. And it's basically labor intensive work for them, even with, uh, with the tools that we provide them to make it easier. Mm -hmm. So and, the majority of our churn is comes from that. And David, you mentioned your land, you're spending on PPC ads. What does it cost you to get a new $15 a month customer? Um, it cost me today, um, $50. Got it. So that's a what a four or four or five month payback period. Yeah. How do you make that work? Because your customers are only staying for six or seven months. So there's only two or three months of margin there for you to make money. Um, they stay seven to eight months in most cases. And, okay. Uh, same same question though. There's only three or four months there for you to make margin on. So we do it at scale. Got it. Is there any, I mean, are you okay with those margins and you're just going to keep driving new volume no, or you? Oh, the thing is that one of the big mistakes we've done in the history of the company is basically we started scaling before we uh, fully nailed our unit economics. And uh, uh, in a way, we kind of woke up too late for that and we've dedicated 2020 into fixing that. And we are now in a much better place than we were two years ago but still not where we want to be. And a large part of our roadmap this year is actually dedicated to further fixing it. All right. Well, David, on that note, let's wrap up with the famous five. Number one, what's your favorite business book? What's my favorite uh, business book? Um, Zero to Lunch, I guess. What to launch? Zero to Lunch. Zero to Lunch. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? You know, I'm following on stopping. Um, I mean, from the big guys, I'd say Sundar Pinchai. Uh, num at Google. Uh, number yeah. three, what's your favorite online tool for building the business? Uh, I'd say Mixpanel, if, that's, if that could be considered that. Of course. Number three, how many or four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? How many? Hours of sleep. Hours of sleep. Uh, uh, I'd say an average around uh, five. Okay. And what's your situation? Married, single, kids? Um, living with a girlfriend. Not, okay. No kids. Okay. And how old are you? 36. 36. Last question, David. What's something you wish you knew when you were 20? Um... I wish I knew how to monetize my side projects when I was 20. I was so involved in engineering and I never knew how to sell what I was building. Guys, scholarshipowl.com doing 4 million in revenue this year from 15,000 students paying 15 bucks a month to identify scholarship opportunities at scale. This is very much a tech play. They've got 20 people on the team of 50. They've done this all bootstrapped, which is great. Uh, scaling nicely. Obviously, there's churn here because it's students, but they're okay with that because unit economics work nicely as they look to continue to scale using content, PPC, uh, and their 6 million person email list. David, thanks for taking us to the top. Thank you very much. One more thing before you go. We have a brand new show every Thursday at 1 p.m. Central. It's called Shark Tank for SaaS. We call it Deal or Bust. One founder comes on, three hungry buyers. They try and do a deal live, and the founder shares back-end dashboards, their expenses, their revenue, 
ARPU, CAC, LTV, you name it, they share it. And the buyers try and make a deal live. It is fun to watch every Thursday, 1 p.m. Central. Additionally, remember, these recorded founder interviews go live. We release them here on YouTube every day at 2 p.m. Central. To make sure you don't miss any of that, make sure you click the subscribe button below here on YouTube, the big red button, and then click the little bell notification to make sure you get notifications when we do go live. I wouldn't want you to miss breaking news in the SaaS world, whether it's an acquisition, a big fundraise, a big sale, a big profitability statement, or something else. I don't want you to miss it. Additionally, if you want to take this conversation deeper and further, we have by far the largest private Slack community for B2B SaaS founders. You want to get in there. We've probably talked about your tool if you're running a company or your firm if you're investing. You can go in there and quickly search and see what people are saying. Sign up for that at nathanlacka.com forward slash slack. In the meantime, I'm hanging out with you here on YouTube. I'll be in the comments for the next 30 minutes. Feel free to let me know what you thought about this episode. And if you enjoyed it, click the thumbs up. We get a lot of haters that are mad at how aggressive I am on these shows, but I do it so that we can all learn. We have to counter those people. We got to push them away. Click the thumbs up below to counter them and know that I appreciate your guys' support. All right, I'll be in the comments. See ya.